The copper wire LED strings are getting really popular these days. Uh, I'd be mainly guessing because they're very easy to manufacture. And a few people have said they've done things like either they've damaged them and the, the whole string's gone out or a section's gone out or uh, they've tried to cut them down to length and uh, the whole chain has gone out. So this video is about how to fix them if they are fixable, which uh, they usually are. Uh, if you've accidentally done that. But let's start off with a little mention that uh, this is 2017, it's come, coming up to Christmas. B&Q, one of our biggest DIY suppliers, has issued an urgent plug recall notice on these type of remote control plugs. And I'm not sure if it's the generic brand because these are rebranded by lots of different companies. But uh, they've uh, put a recall notice for these. So if you recognize these, and you have some that you got from B&Q, I'd recommend you go and check their website, DIY.com, I think it is. And you can check your uh, serial numbers to see if yours are covered by that recall. Apparently, some of them get, are getting very hot. I don't know if it's just under very high load or if it's just part of the circuitry in itself. It'd be quite interesting to see one of the faulty ones. But I shall just put these down out of the way because they're not what this video about is about. This video is about these lights. So let's uh, discuss how these are made in the first place because it's very simple. And this is why the Chinese manufacturers love them so much because they are really, really easy to make. So if you get a copper wire, and this is a enameled copper wire. Where's my example of enameled copper wire? Here we go. This is typical enameled copper wire. It's a, it looks like a, a sort of dark, well, in this case, you've got this sort of clear ones, you've got the sort of golden coloured ones, the coppery ones. But in this case it's copper but covered with quite a dark varnish. And the varnish is the insulation. It's normally used for winding transformers and coils and things like that. And the way they make these lights is they have a machine that just basically forms the uh, copper wire into little peaks like that. And then just buffs the very top, just lightly, just to remove the uh, insulating layer, the uh, lacquer, and it creates a, a flat plateau. And then they sit an LED across and then solder it onto that. And there are two wires uh, with the LEDs bridging between them. And then once they've done that, they've got the wires like that with the LED sewed across the bottom and they dip it in a sort of resin. And what that does is it forms, when they've dipped it and pulled it back out the resin, it forms that characteristic sort of drip that covers everything. It covers the LED, it covers the wire, it makes it completely waterproof and it also makes it very, very strong. And you can see from the shape of these that it's very clearly uh, a machine that's just doing this, that, uh, that it's just all very mass produced. And I'm guessing it's huge spills of the wire and one end the LED hopper and it's just a continuous production line of this coming out. And then they cut it to length as desired. Now, they form these into strings in a multiple of different ways. You get the 12 volt string, which is actually effectively four LEDs in series to make up the 12 volts with the wire acting as a resistor. You've got the very simple copper strings with the battery pack that it's just two parallel wires, and that's all very simple. You've got the uh, more complex version. It's actually got three wires going along for uh, just a parallel circuit. And I'll explain those. I've got a wee, I've already drawn it out because it was fairly complicated. It was going to take a lot of time drawing all these LEDs. So here's the simplest version. It's the two wires, positive and negative, with the LEDs bridging across them at regular intervals. Very, very simple. If you have a string of these and something happens, uh, and these are most likely to be USB powered or battery powered, but if something happens and they suddenly go out halfway along, the most likely reason is that one of these wires has broken. And the easy fix for that is just to go along and find the last LED it was lit, the last LED it's not lit, the first LED it's not lit, should I say, and you'll see there probably is a broken wire at that point. And you can join the wires together. You could basically, if it's broken off at an LED, you could just cut one of those LEDs out and you could bridge those wires together to actually get that back up and running again. Uh, this is a good point uh, to mention the best way to strip these wires. And that's also why I have that uh, lacquered wire there. It may look like it's just bare wires and you could twist them together and it would work, but in reality, if they were bare wires, they would just short against each other. They do have that ultra thin layer of lacquer. And the best way to strip that is, there's a few ways. You can use a fine file. You can use a bit of sandpaper. You can use, in some instances, not this particular one because it's very fine, you can use a matchbox with the sandpaper on the side. 
Or you could actually also use a, a sharp knife and scrape it like that. I find the best way is to get a bit of sandpaper, a, a nail file is perfect for this, and just grip the wire in between the two uh, abrasive sides and just drag it through it. And it takes a wee while because it's gradually just grinding its way down through that lacquer. But after you've done that a few times, and keep in mind this is a much thicker wire than the other ones, but after you've done it a few times, as you can probably hopefully see here, it's starting to expose the uh, shiny copper underneath. Don't know if you're actually seeing it. Can you see the shiny copper underneath? Let's uh, zoom up on that and see if you can see the shiny copper. That's not bad. You can see the sort of shiny copper that's being exposed there where the lacquer's coming off. The other option, and it's one of the easiest but one of the messiest looking, is just to get a flame and just burn the end of the copper with a lighter because that usually burns the copper away, but some of them are very heat resistant, so they will only really react to being abraded. This looks like the very heat resistant one. So uh, let's uh, zoom back out again. You can solder these back together once you've... Oh, that's another uh, technique you could use. If you get the solder iron and you wet it with solder and then run the copper through it, it sometimes makes the coating sort of melt away uh, with the solder. Bit of a technique to that, but it works quite well. You don't need to solder the wires together, you can just twist them together. This is a, I'm saying this because that means that technically speaking all you need to fix the simplest sets of these is a nail file and a pair of scissors. Let's get that slight mess of abrasive off my bench now. It's all feeling very gritty. So in the case of a, a simple set like this, all you do is, if you found a wire had broken off, you could just, if it was really obviously where it had broken, just basically take that, strip it, uh, get the matching cable the other side of the LED and just uh, join those together and the rest should light. Usually these are low voltage, if you short them out it's not going to be too dramatic, but it's if suddenly while you're working on it all the other lights go dim or go out, then yeah, sort of unplug it at that point or turn the batteries off because it may actually be shorting out. The next type of technology uh, version it's also worth mentioning with these ones, uh, it's very simple. If you uh, cut it in the middle completely, then all the ones up to that point will stay lit. Uh, it's not necessarily a great situation, particularly in sets where, where is that uh, USB set? This set, where there's one resistor actually in here, which uh, is getting quite warm, and it's limiting the current, because if you cut the set in half, it means that the that same amount of current will be going to the uh, what the remaining LEDs and they'll be a lot brighter, they'll be running at much higher current. The next one uh, is a three wire system, it's low voltage again. This is a, a version of that, if I just grab the USB lead. And this one relies on the resistance of the wire and it runs LEDs at quite high output as a result of that. And this is using the three wire technique and if you cut this anywhere, in the string, the whole lot will go out. So what's actually happening here is instead of the positive being fed from this end as well as the negative, the negative is fed from this end on the set of two wires that are going up the standard parallel array of LEDs, but the positive is actually going up an extra wire that just goes right up to the end and then connects onto the positive connection at that end. This has two advantages. First of all, You've got the resistance of that wire plus the resistance of the turn path and it means that, you know, you might not need a resistor for a long run of LEDs. It might be the resistance of the wire may be enough to actually act as the resistor for the whole circuit. The other advantage is that if you had a very long run with the simple two wire system, the LEDs as the current uh, ca caused voltage drop along that string, they would potentially get a little bit dimmer as they went along. With this one, it doesn't matter where the LED is, it's always going to be the exactly same current path, length and resistance through any LED, so they all light at the exact same intensity along the full run. Now, if you accidentally chop the end of that string off, let's do it in fact, let's, uh, let's chop this and then fix it. So, okay, so if you were to accidentally chop some LEDs off, the whole lot goes out. So now you've got three wires, and I'd recommend that you basically strip them all. So I'm probably going to use the file to do this, since uh, it's quite abrasive and it's fast, so let's uh, strip them. One of the things uh, about the copper wire that's slightly annoying 
the varnish copper wire is that it's quite hard to tell when you've succeeded in stripping it because there's very little indication, particularly if the lacquer is the same colour as the, you know, if it's a clear lacquer so it all looks the same colour. So let's uh, see if I've got that. So I'll strip all three wires. Like this. And then short any two together. Very briefly, just short any two. That's not working. What about this one? That's not working. What about this one? That's it. So uh, the one, only one of those combinations of three wires will actually make the LEDs light. And once you've found that, just twist them together. And the other wire, you can tape that up, fold it over, tape it up, and the other wire, just cut it out the way so that it doesn't short against those wires. And that is effect of this string fix. So that's the three wire fix. That's the three wire, and uh, I already covered the two wire. Now let's go on to the slightly more complex one that is not so great. I've just snagged that in my beard. Ow. And that is the 12 volt version. So the 12 volt version usually has quite a lot of LEDs, 100 LEDs or more. And uh, I'll just put that little bit out of the way. And it usually has this sort of jack connector on the end for the 12 volt power supply. And the wiring arrangement of these is slightly different. In this case, it will be divided. If, if it's a 100 LED set, there'll be effectively 25 LEDs in parallel multiplied by four times. So there'll be uh, four sections of the 25 in parallel. Once again, the wire will go up to the other end, but it will connect to one set of those uh, 25, and then the negative of those will connect to the positive of the next 25, and it means that effectively what you end up with is plus 12 volts, and then one, two, three, four LED sections in series. And they're relying not only on the fact that the voltage of these LEDs will go up to typically about 3 volts each. So 3 volts times 4 is the 12 volts, but they also rely on the fact that then the current's going to be quite high because there's a lot of LEDs in parallel, and the wire resistance is then going to act as the other uh, factor in limiting the current through them. So if you break these, if you were to cut them off at the end, it's very tricky because if you could use that sort of wire dabbing technique to make them light, but there's a risk that if you were to short the wire onto this connection, for instance, if you'd cut this section here short, if you were to short that wire on here, it would effectively short out that first section, and then you'd have 12 volt across just uh, 9 volts worth of LEDs, the set of the 3 volt, 3 volt, 3 volt, and that could cause quite a high current flow, so proceed with caution. Also, dab, if you're dabbing the wires, also note that if you've got, uh, if you've cut, say, 20 off the end, you're only going to have five in that section versus passing the same current as 25 in each other one. So the 12 volt version, I would say, if you've cut it short, all you can hope to do is try and repair it with the existing section and then, uh, tuck. if you're trying to cut it short because you don't want as many LEDs, some, it's better just to roll them out the way, roll them up and tuck them out of sight. That's the easiest way to shorten the 12 volt sets. But uh, if you have damaged it or nicked a wire somewhere, then it really is just a case of tracing it through following uh, this as an example and trying to find where that wire's broken. Um, and unfortunately, it means that, you know, if it's one of these wires is broken, then the whole lot will go out. Um, if it's the main sort of wire that goes up to the other end, the whole lot will go out. Um, but if it's just a, one of these, well, actually, no, uh, just about everything puts it out, doesn't it? You could get a situation that if the wire broke part of the way down uh, the string, you'd lose a small part of one of the sections and those LEDs would be a lot brighter. Um, it's very much a case of just trying to restore it to the original, though. Um, the 12 volt ones are not as hackable as the uh, lower voltage sets like these. So I don't know if that's going to help or not. I hope it does help. It covers most of the things people have asked. So um, that's it. If you have these copper wire lights and they're faulty or you just want to shorten them in any way, then that's how you do it.